Hey guys, welcome back to another Flesh and Blood video. This video is proudly brought to you by the House of Cards, the official sponsor of my stream. Be sure to check out the link in the description below for all of your Flesh and Blood needs. Over the past couple of weeks, I've had multiple people ask me, what are you doing into Kasai to help you win so much when you're playing Victor? And I always kind of just look at them confused because the first iteration of Kasai that everybody played wasn't really playing any pumps besides Blade Flurry, which made the matchup kind of free because you were just able to outvalue them as Victor over the course of the game. With what I just said in mind, I never actually thought that Kasai was a buy. I just felt like Victor was pretty heavily favored because cards like Test of Strength and Trounce give you the ability to block keep extra cards in your hand, and not turn on Hot Streak or Centauri Saber's effect. Now, moving forward, Kasai has made some changes and the decklists have innovated and they're playing more pumps like Stroke of Foresight and Overpower, and I think that this gives them more play into you and makes the late game a lot scarier as the Victor player. But I still think I found a couple of things that can kind of help shore up the matchup. The two games that I've picked for you guys today, I feel like really capture the essence of this matchup and really show a lot of pivotal points from both sides of the matchup and how you want to be playing if you're Kasai and how you want to be playing if you're Victor. Thanks for stopping by, guys. I hope you enjoy the matches. Okay. So we're playing against Kasai and we actively chose to go second here, which I think is the correct play. Um, I like going second into Kasai. I'm going to give the Terra Sunder here because if they want to spend a card to get go again, that's fine. But I want to force them to spend the card to get go again. Um, and I think I'm just going to give these two cards. I know the Spinal Crush is really good, but Command and Conquer, especially if I can find an early pummel here, like has an insane amount of value for me. Um... Let's see here. What are we looking at? I mean, I don't really want to arsenal the Golden Sun. I guess we're just going to throw the Golden Sun here and we're not going to break the shield. Like, I don't really want to use the shield here, so I guess we're just going to attack for seven. It's the best thing that we can do with this hand, so I think this is a fine play. It's not great by any means, but it's okay. Um, okay. So we're going to give, man, I really don't want to give Tests of Strength here. We're going to give Clash of Vigor, and we're going to go ahead and give them go again. The Blade Flurry, okay. So giving them the Test of Strength would have worked out, but it also pans out for us on the second swing through here. Um, so we win the gold token there, and then we can actually go... I can go five go again, putting this on the bottom, make a surge, and then swing the hammer. Or I'm sorry, yeah, five go again. We could alternatively throw the golden sun here. Um, like that could just be another line we could take, but I like I like throwing like mixed attacks here because like hitting hitting them with the hammer, like I enjoy because like if they're gonna give me their sink bellows on a hammer, that's a win in my opinion. That is like a big W in my opinion. Like every day of the week and twice on Sunday if my opponent attacks me with, um, or if my opponent gives me a sink blow on the hammer, like we're winning. We're just, we're so far ahead. It's crazy in my opinion. Like not actually so far ahead, but it is a big W in far as the match is concerned. Okay, those throw hot streak. We're going to give... Um, is this a Civic Steps or Orem Aegis spot? I mean, technically, they could have... Yeah, they... they If we block here, they have Glint and then one card in hand, so this is a Civic Steps spot. It's perfectly fine. Um, And then they're going to come in for five. I think we're just supposed to block six here, to be honest. Like, we're kind of, like, letting it fall by, but... We're also up six points pretty early in the game, so I think I'm okay to just give cards. I think this is an okay line. Like, let's just deny them the gold. <clears throat> they have a gold from Crown of Dominion, but let's deny them another one here. I think this is fine. This is also a pretty good hand, because, I mean, we can throw CNC Pummel even after blocking with the Trounce, and if we win the Trounce, we get another card to block with, which is insane. <laughs> Let's just do this. I think this is fine. We're giving up some pretty good equipment there, and we're over blocking a little bit. Like, we're inefficiently using the tectonic plating by a point, so we're wasting the extra point. So, tectonic plating basically blocks for two this game, but I think that's okay. 
So if I go E-Strike, put Thunderquake on the bottom, it'll be six go again, and then I can throw Command and Conquer and have two floating. <clears throat> There's a lot of value in that play. And we put the Thunderquake on the bottom here first because I would rather see the Thunderquake first as opposed to seeing it later. It is a better card than the Thunk, so I want to see it earlier than I want to see the Thunk here. So our opponent just takes six here, and then we throw Command and Conquer, and we have the Pummel in our hand, and the fact that we didn't make a Surge is a little, like, of a tell here what we're going to do, but I still think we're okay with just pushing through the damage here. Like, let's just go ahead and get a card out of their hand, and let's get their Arsenal there. We're putting ourselves in a pretty good spot, in my opinion, so... I'm still going to play the Pummel. Um, don't really know what they decided to undo there. I mean, Test of Strength looks pretty good here, right? Yep, Test of Strength looks really good here now. So now they're going to Arsenal. We're going to throw the Debilitate and Arsenal to Sink Below. <laughs> I think this is a pretty good line of play for us. They are chewing through our equipment pretty quickly, but, like, I... We have so much of a value lead right now, like literal life lead, that like we're just, we're very much in the driver's seat. Um, are they going to activate Kasai? So this is four. Like to deny them the copper generation here if I can. And we know they have a nourishing emptiness in their arsenal, so we want to keep this. I honestly think it's better just to block with two cards. I mean, we could throw the debilitate here if we give the shield. Well, I, yeah, they're going to have go again here, so we can give the civic steps. Right? I think we can give the civic steps here safely. Like, this feels like a pretty safe bet here. And then because of the Vigor token, when he throws the Centauri Saber, we can block with Choke Slam, and we can throw the Debilitate for six because of the Vigor token. So, I mean, this, this gets one card out of their hand. They're going to give us a card and Dynamo here, if I had to guess, but I think this is still a good play um, because it forces them to make a decision. They could also just give us Bracers if they wanted to. Tink below. Yep, take one. And it does not say that they put a card on the bottom, so it looks like they didn't here. <laughs> this would be a good turn to have a Surge. Um, I mean, they're just going to make a Copper here, so, like, I'm not interested. Like, I think I'm just going to say no blocks and make them have it here. I think that's a better play for us, is just to force them to have it. Now it's like they're they're gonna have it nine times out of ten. It's mostly what Kasai is playing is a lot of reactions that actually give go again and buff your next attack. But <laughs> take five, man. Taking ten this turn feels not great for us. I mean, this has go again, but they don't have any floating. So like we'd have to take five, go to twenty nine, and then we get to make a surge and throw ten. Getting rid of one of our... I could alternatively just block 9 and throw the hammer. I think it's better to take 5 and throw 10. We could throw the sink below here, but there's no on hit that I want to stop. Like, I want to save the sink below for, like, a really, like, important on hit that we need to, like, you know, make sure we're stopping. Like, gold generation or a lot of coppers off of spoils of war, like... There are multiple things that we do need to be stopping, and I just don't think this is it. Our opponent just takes six. Okay. All right, here we go. We're probably looking at using our Spoils of War this turn, if I had to guess. So, this is two. Um, If I, like... They probably have another Blade Flurry. Have they played one or two? They've played two Blade Flurries. This is probably a Blade Flurry, but I don't think I'm supposed to overblock to play around it here. Um, we won the first one, and then the Blade Flurry's on top, so we're going to target ourselves here. 
because we want to win this. And winning with the thunk is huge because it gives us another might for our choke slam this turn. So really getting a lot of value here. And the fun part is because they don't have the blade flurry, we do know it's on top for next turn, but we actually just get the block six. And then, yeah, we get the block six here. Okay, in the swing pushes it through. We could have played the sink below there, but I think giving them one gold is fine. We're going to make a new surge and throw the choke slam, and this is going to be for 10. So we blocked very efficiently, and we're attacking for 10 this turn. So I really like putting them on the back foot if I can help it. And we know they have the blade flurry here. So I'm like, man, I really want to, I'd really like to, um, I'd honestly really like to play the sink below here, but I don't know how correct that is. If I'm being honest. I mean, maybe I'm just supposed to play the sink below. Maybe I'm supposed to block. Like, we know it's just a Blade Flurry. They're going to play Blade Flurry, Blade Flurry, and then they're going to play Hot Streak, which is going to be for two. So let's block Trounce. We do win that, which is awesome. you love to see it. Debilitate's a really good Arsenal card. I mean, yeah, I, you know what? I'm okay just taking one here, honestly. Like, I know I'm giving them another gold, but I'm pretty okay just taking one. Um, so they just decided to make the vigor, and then I can block with a debilitate, which gives it go again, but it doesn't matter. And then we're going to make a new surge and then come in for 11, which is, like, insane value. Like, our trounce is hitting this game, and, like, we're winning a lot of our trounces is, like, just so good for us. There's the equipment suite. Yep. Are you going to go to two? Okay, there's another that all you got. So you're going to go to five. So now you have two equipment block left. My, I'm not counting the dynamos because dynamo is like always there. Um, but like you're down pretty heavy. Uh, like you're down 21 life. You're down equipment. Like we're really, we're really like coming out ahead here. I feel like. Um, let's go ahead and play the sink below. And then I'm going to put the Prime to fight on the bottom. That's fine. And then this is for two. This could very well be a... This could very well be a do something with go again thing. Like throw like a nourishing emptiness after this, but it's not. I mean, that's fine. Like, all right, well, they didn't they didn't have the nourishing emptiness to, like, punish us there. So, I mean, we're just going to go for the CNC pummel here. And if you don't have something, you're just dead. What did they play? Did they, did I miss something? They were at five. They took, they blocked four, took six, and went to one. Did Talshar just have a stroke or am I going crazy? Oh, they played a slap happy. Okay, slap happy. I was trying to find it. I was like, I can see it there. I just don't know what it is. Um, so yeah, that's fine. Um, I think we'll just give them a gold. It's fine. Like, hopefully with them being at one, we're able to close the game out before they can use something like raise an army to like really set up and like punish us in a bad way. So I'm just going to try and like use this, just use like the life lead here to go E strike go again. We're just going to go go again on the E strike and hammer. Um, so I'll probably block. I mean, I could just go E strike for seven. I think five and then that is better. Yeah, I think I want to be able to play the E-Strike into the hammer here. Um, so, I mean, right now we've taken six. I'm going to give the debilitate here and block this out. We could go seven and arsenal the Terra Sunder in hopes of finding something that ends the game, but we have Macho Grandes in our deck that do the same that do the same thing. So we're going to go go again here. 
We're gonna go five go again. I don't. I oh, did our opponent undo something? I must have missed something here. So my opponent said that they didn't get the Arsenal card, and I just I noticed that just now. So I told them just to start their turnover, and we would just run it back here. Um, and I'm just going to block the same way so that they can get the Arsenal their last card, because I get it. Um, I completely understand, like, wanting to Arsenal your card. Like, that changes, changes the game in a lot, like, in a lot of ways. So we're going to take two here on the first one, which is what we did. They create their gold. We're going to take two on the hot streak here. I go to 20. I'm going to take two more on the hot streak and go to 18. And then I'm going to block with the debilitate, which is exactly what we blocked with. And then they're going to get to Arsenal, their card. And now we're in the spot that we wanted the game to be in. So we're going to get five go again here. And if they don't have a D-React here, which I think they still have some Fate for Scenes left. I think they have one Fate for Scene left. I could be wrong. Um, let's see. Have we seen any Fate for Scenes this game? We've seen all the Sink Belows, I'm pretty sure. No, just two of the Sink Belows? Hmm, must be going crazy. They have one here, though. Yeah, so there's the last Sink Below. So... There's the sink below, and then we're going to throw the hammer, which, again, like, we're just continuing to throw breakpoint break attacks here. We're getting armor this turn, which is really nice. Um, I like this hand a lot. This hand blocks very efficiently at what we're trying to do here. Activate Kasai, and then they're going to come in for six, go again. So block test of strength, and like this... We could block with the gauntlets here in case this is a card they want to play. Like if he wants to play a, uh, if he wants to play a, a buff effect, it only gets plus, uh, it only gets the plus one. He would lose a point off of his blade flurry. Um, we're going to block three. We're going to try and deny the gold token in any way that we can here. We're going to, on our turn, we're going to make a surge throw Command and Conquer Arsenal to Sink Below and try to play to the value that Sink Below provides here. And we're pretty much just going to try and keep our life total up until we get to a point to where we draw Macho Grande that we can try to end the game here. It's like, I assume he's just trying to Arsenal and he clicked too soon. I mean, it, it's it's easy to do on Talishar. Like, sometimes you can't tell. Um, like, sometimes it lags. Like, sometimes you can't really tell where like where it's at like it's like talishar is great and i love talishar but talishar can be tough to it can be difficult at times <laughs> i think our opponent like i think since we had to refresh to get through it here i think we're just waiting on our opponent to refresh as well just kind of hanging out, waiting to see, waiting for them to get their refresh in, and then we'll be good. And they may not, they may not refresh. Some people don't realize, like, when the moment or two goes by that you need to refresh. I try to do it as often as I can, but <clears throat> it's not always an easy thing to remember. I'm going to refresh again, just in case it is me. I was like, I think it's my opponent, but I'm going to do it just in case. It's like the irony and the fact that it would be me that we're actually waiting on me to refresh and not them. That would be pretty funny. <clears throat> I'm always intrigued by Crown of Dominion um, as opposed to Crown of Providence in this matchup. Like, I, like I'm always, I'm always interested in that, like in that decision point that people have decided on. So let's see. All three sink belows have been played, and we've seen one slap happy. No, I'm sorry. We've seen two slap happies. Yeah, we've seen two slap happies, but we haven't actually seen. Um, we haven't actually seen a. Uh, <laughs> haven't actually seen um, any fate for scenes yet. 
Like, normally we have to get through all those defense reactions before we can, like, really start doing anything. We're probably going to have to take some life this turn. Okay, so there's a stroke of foresight. So we're going to essentially take one here, and then Blade Runner gives go again, and he's just wanting to buff the next thing he's going to do, which is fine. Like, um... I mean, I'm, I think I'm just going to block three here and take two. Like, there's no on hits. We've already given up the on hit, and I wasn't going to throw the sink below over one point. So considering where we're at, I think I'm just going to take two, go to 15, and throw 10 overpower. Um, with all the reactions that his deck plays, there's a pretty heavy chance that he can actually block it out. Or maybe not. Maybe we're just going to be able to close the game out. Normally, the Golden Sun won't be able to close those games out, so, but we'll take it when it pops up like that. Around turn, like, four or five, I actually had a Trounce. I won the Trounce, and then I was able to go East Strike Go Again into Command and Conquer on Pummel. Now, my opponent made an interesting decision by blocking with a card from hand in Valiant Dynamos to only block four on the Command and Conquer, so they were going to lose their arsenal anyway, but considering they only had two cards in hand, I made the decision to actually play the Pummel, because this way I'm leaving them with one card, and I have a higher chance of them actually doing nothing and just arsling and passing back to me so that if I have like a red Macho Grande or a red Thunderquake, I can make a new surge and I can just come in again. So later on in the game, we had another Command and Conquer Pummel turn and our opponent did the exact same thing where they blocked with one card from hand and they blocked with the Valiant Dynamos. Now, I understand why they blocked with a card because if they took all of it here, they were just dead. But that is two times in a row that my opponent actually blocked Command and Conquer in a way that wouldn't have saved them even if I didn't have the pummel there. So I don't really know what their thought process is there because I know a lot of people are like, hey, I'm going to block the Command and Conquer and I'm going to play around the pummel or I'm not going to block it and I'm just not going to block anything. And if you get a card from my hand and a card from my arsenal, oh, well, it is what it is. So my opponent made some interesting decisions there and I'm not really sure how I feel about them. One of the biggest things about this game that I want to point out is the fact that I won like almost every single clash. I can't remember, but it might have been literally every clash. When you're winning every trounce and every test of strength as Victor, you're going to be in such a better spot because winning your clashes gives you so much value. Now. Winning clashes against Warrior is a lot easier than it is against Brute, but sometimes you actually lose because we play cards like Terra Sunder and the other Trounces in the Sink Belows can give you a hard time sometimes in that matchup, but I think that they're necessary cards to have in the deck to have a good percentage into Warrior. Okay, we're playing against Kasai, and they chose to go second. They open up Hot Streak and Centauri Saber against me, and they're also on Crown of Dominion, which is like kind of spicy. I'm kind of intrigued by that. Um, I think we're going to block here because I would rather block <laughs> than not take damage. Um, losing Clash of Vigor on turn zero is pretty unfortunate. Um, the fact that they have a Nourishing Emptiness on top is like not great for me. Ooh, okay. So they're going to throw this Nourishing Emptiness at me. Interesting. They're definitely going to throw this Nourishing Emptiness at me. Um, which I mean, is fine. Like I, yeah, like. The fact that they're playing Stroke of Foresight is really interesting to me. Um, I mean, we're probably just supposed to take three here, right? Like, I don't know, like, if we're ever supposed to, like, get, like, block with equipment here. I think we'll just take three. I don't know. There could be a reason to give Shield and, like, Plating here and stop them from having a five-card hand, but I truly don't know. Um, this hand sucks. We're just going to throw the choke slam, and since they're not running Crown of Providence into us, we're just going to arsenal the Command and Conquer and wait for the Pummel. Um, now, obviously, if we find, like, you know, a turn where, like, we need to throw Command and Conquer or do something else, like, we'll do it, but I think I would rather just wait and... Okay. I think I'd rather just wait, though. Okay, create an agility token. So the Centauri Saber's coming in for... I don't know why you played the Slice and Dice there. I mean, that's a lot of damage. Like, I guess let's just... Let's block out. Like, let's just take one here. I think that's better than anything else we can do. Throwing the Choke Slam for eight, like, if we take, you know, seven, like, I don't think is... I'd rather just take one and pass here and just kind of like, I don't know, try to set up and wait a little bit. 
card like Test of Strength is a great example of something we want to draw into defensively anyway. The Trounces and the Test of Strengths here are probably we're really going to look to try and utilize those if we can. They're on Slap Happy, okay. I mean, this is fine. This one we can cover up pretty easily, so... We can block with a thunder. We can block with the thunderquake here, and then we can go. Um, just gonna say no blocks here and take two. I think. I think I'd rather just say no blocks here, force them to have something. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and then they're gonna come in for five. We're just gonna block six and throw seven. Um, I think I'd rather just keep my life total up here as opposed to actually trying to like throw the E-Strike um, with go again and then swing the hammer. I think we'll just come in for seven here. <clears throat> Had we been able to keep the other card, like it would have been awesome, but keep another card there. But I don't think that we, I think we were better off just to make the play that we did. Outland Skirmish says the next time. So it only makes one copper. Um, I mean, we could block Terra Sunder and shield. Force them to have a pump here. I was like, there's a bigger chance that they have something like Blade Runner or something that gives go again, as opposed to like actually having a pump. Um, I mean, this could be a nourishing here. Like... I don't really want to give them the Kasai hit, though. Like, I think we're just supposed to block six. It does get go again, so, like, it'd be unfortunate if they did have the six here. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're just going to we're gonna block. We'll take four here. And then we'll make a surge and swing the hammer. <clears throat> they did have the six there, which, I mean, like, good play from our opponent. Um, I just, I wasn't... I don't think there was a world where I was going to give them the gold to play around the six. I just don't think that's going to happen. Um, and we mail out another card from them, which is nice. So we can block Spinal Crush here, throw the Debilitate, Arsenal the Command and Conquer, and then we have... I mean, this already has Go Again, so we might as well block, right? And there's just the Copper Generation. I mean, we're just gonna we're just going to give it to them here. They're going to get it on the next one if we don't give it to them here, and I'm not giving up. I guess I could have given Civic Steps. Like, I could have given Spinal and Civic Steps and then given Tech Plating to stop it, but I think it's fine. Um, like, we've already committed to this line, so we're just going to go ahead and take this. I think the best way to use Civic Steps in this matchup is to make sure that, like, they can't throw a Command and Conquer, like, after the second one, after the second, like, Sword Attack. So on the first one, you can just block with Civic Steps and kind of just give... Give up some value there, which I think is not the end of the world. I would be surprised if they didn't give me a card or a defense reaction here. They pitched a slap happy early on, so we'll see. We'll see if they're running like a heavy defense react version. They're on that all you got, which I don't really consider that all you got to be like uh, this crazy aggressive like um, defense react version. That's more of like a like that's more of like a hey like. <clears throat> like they play that and I think almost every Kasai list plays that. Um, so I think right here is a good place to give the Civic Steps, honestly. Like I think this is a fantastic place to give Civic Steps. Because they have to play a card. Um, I mean, if they don't want to go again, that's fine. Like, it's like, yeah, I would be surprised. So we take two, give them the gold, and then we get to block with Tests of Strength. Yeah. I mean, it's fine. We get to just go <clears throat> go again into seven. So, I mean, we get to have a 12-point turn here, which is, like, fine. Like, it's on rate. Um, they're getting a lot of value out of Dynamos this game, which, like, not that surprising. Like, um, like these, this deck gets a lot of value out of Dynamos every time it plays it. Um, so, I mean, if they take six and go to 18 here, we're technically up four if they do that. Hopefully we win this trounce. Hopefully we win this trounce. I'm hoping that they needed to me to block with a card there. Honestly, it's kind of what we're going for right now. 
<clears throat> and we know we have a Macho Grande on top. Yep, so they have a glint. All right, so I mean, that's fine. Like, and then Blade Runner as well. And then they're going to throw Saber for six. So if I block Thunk here and here, I can stop the gold generation. And then I can make a new surge. I can make a surge and then I can throw the Spinal Crush for 10. I think this is a pretty good use of our stuff here to like be able to push damage. We're mostly just buying time until we get to the Command and Conquer Pummel anyway. So we're just going to force cards out of their hand. I mean, if they take three here, like again, I would call that a win for me. Um, this hand's not great. Like I'm not a huge fan of this hand right here. So if we block, I mean, I think like we're just going to block with Prime to Fight and Thunderquake here, right? Or am I supposed to block six or am I supposed to block five? I mean, so like if I block, I could block Prime to Fight, Tectonic Plating Civic Steps. I don't hate this. And then they come in for two, and we're gonna give the Thunderquake, which is fine. Like this is this is kind of like what we had wanted to happen there. Um, I mean, best case is th that they would have wanted to save the Quicken token, and we could have thrown the Spinal, but we get to make a surge and then swing the hammer. We could crack one of the golds here to like try and draw into a blue. Um, we don't know what's on top of our deck, but that would be pretty good. If we did hit a blue, that would be pretty awesome for us. So. We would have hit the blue, which would have been good. So we can block Clash of Vigor and Thunderquake here. I mean, I think we're just blocking. Even if it gives go again, I think we're just blocking. Hitting the Golden Sun there is really big. Um, gives us another card to block with if we want to. Like, I don't really know that we want to be blocking with that card. Ew. Um, that's unfortunate. Your next attack gets plus three. Um, so, I mean, yeah, if we just like block nine, we get to make a surge and crash in with the hammer. <clears throat> also, you'll notice that like we're catching up on card economy pretty quickly. Like, we're not down as many as we were a few minutes ago, which is kind of cool. So, I'm pretty happy to see that, honestly. Um, I'm going to say no blocks. Like, they probably have go again, if I had to guess. Like, I would almost assuredly say that they have go again here, but... I think we're just taking six. Because we're going to take six here, and I'm going to tell you why. Because if they pitch with grains to, like, take this away, like, then we're going to pummel the debilitate. And if they don't, like, if they... <clears throat> excuse me. If they, like, if they don't arsenal their card, we'll throw the debilitate. And if they do arsenal their card, we're just going to throw the command and conquer in the pummel here. And if they want to give me two cards and grains and bracers, that's fine with me. Um, like, I'm totally okay with that. Like, if they want to block 10, that's fine. Like, that's perfectly fine. Like, you're either blocking 10 or you're blocking nothing here. Like, I guess they could have a slap happy. No? I kind of assumed they were going to have something there, if I'm being honest. Also, this hand sucks. Have we played another CNC? No, so there's one more CNC left in the deck. Um, I'm not a fan of this hand in any way. <laughs> so if we block Debilitate... And we, I mean, <clears throat> we have no choice here. We either have to give them the gold here or we have to give them the gold or I mean, I can block three with the debilitate and take two and then I can swing the hammer. So I'm basically going to take four and go to eight to swing the hammer, which is terrible. So I think I'm better off just to block everything they're going to do here. Which sucks, because like I really don't want to block with this other pummel. 
but I just think that's the world we're living in here. I mean, I guess I can block three. Stay here, which is fine. And then we get to pitch. Like, again, like drawing quad reds is just so unfortunate. I mean, this could be pretty good, all things considered. The test of strength in the trounce could be pretty solid for us here. So block like this, I think, is the play. Um... I think we want to go ahead and break this. I'm going to put mine on the bottom. I was like, there's a pretty good chance we win, considering they haven't had all you got on top of their deck. Um, we do only have 21 cards in our deck, so we need to be a little bit careful here about what we're trying to do. Um, so they make two copper there, or they make one copper, I guess. I don't really know what we're looking to draw, if I'm being honest with you. If we crack the gold here to draw a card. I think we're just supposed to throw debilitate and like just kind of leave it at that. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll arsenal the Macho Grande because it's probably the best thing we can be doing. Um... I was like, I think we're just going to do this. I was like, yeah, I think this is the best play for us. And then we can give another trounce, make a surge, and come in for 10 dominate. I mean, it's that or give them two coppers, which I really don't want to do. I think we're supposed to block like this. Like, it's, it's very unfortunate for us, but I think it's okay. Like, I hate to give up all of that value. Um... Instead of making a new surge, we could draw a card. We know what's on top of our deck. We have a Thunderquake on top of our deck. I think we want to draw the Thunderquake. And then we're going to Arsenal the Cranial Crush here. So this is 10 Dominate, and we're going to Arsenal the Cranial Crush. Cash in. But they had to pitch to play the cash in. I mean, I do understand. I do understand. Oh, this is going to be for two. So if I give the choke slam here, I can give the choke slam because this already has go again. I mean, the stroke of foresight, I can't do anything about. Like, I'm not going to play around this. I don't think I can afford to, to be honest. Um, so I'm going to take two, go to nine, give them the gold. And I think I want to block this, and I'm just going to throw Cranial Crush at them. We're now at a point in the game where, like, throwing eight is pretty relevant here because they only have three equipment block left, pretty much. Now, we're out of equipment block, which is unfortunate, but, like, they have three equipment block left, like, quote-unquote, because Dynamos is just, like, going to get them value the rest of the game. But they're pretty much forced to, like, where they have one turn where they don't have to give me two cards like that. How did... Okay. What did I just miss? Oh, they played a slap happy? Okay. So they played the slap happy, which makes sense. <laughs> Crack the gold. I mean... I mean, I guess there's some world where they don't have go again, honestly. Like... Question is, if I don't block, like, how how bad of a spot am I in? Like, if I don't block, like, what is my light? Like, what does the rest of the game look like for me? Are there any blade flurries left in the deck? There's one blade flurry, two blade flurries, and there should be one down here. No, so they're out of blade flurries, and they probably have some number of pumps, if I had to guess, but... I think I'm going to force them to have it. But being honest, I'm just going to force them to have it. The pummel's coming up and not this hand, but the next hand, I'm pretty sure. Might be the third hand. I think it's the next hand, though. Like, not this coming hand. It's two hands from now. Um, and, like, I think I would like to set up Spinal Pummel if I can here. 
I mean, we passed, so like I'm just kind of waiting to see what they're going to do here. They do play run through, so we're going to go to four. They're going to make a copper. Going to one feels so bad. Like, going to one feels so bad. I mean, one, two, three. So they'd have to draw no reactions, which I think can be done at this point. Like, we might get to where they have no reactions. So let's just go to three, honestly. Like, playing this game a little loose right now, but like, I don't know. I'm kind of playing to the out that like we might just be able to kill them this turn. Um, there's no guarantee because they do play a lot of reactions in their deck, but we're going to try. Okay. So they block nine, take one. And now they have no equipment left. Um, I mean, they have the dynamos, but I would have liked to have drawn something that wasn't just all blues like this. Like it's kind of unfortunate. The slice and dice. I still the slice and like oh, and they just had the nourishing emptiness. I mean that's fine. I don't understand how their first one was for four, but either way, so good game opponent. They played that very well. The first thing I want to say about this game is I tip my hat to my opponent. They did a fantastic job throughout the entire game of actually throwing swords at me and then giving the second one go again and then still throwing a command and conquer or a nourishing at me. And honestly, it just really put me on the back foot and made so many hands so awkward that I think this gave them a lot more value. And this isn't something that I have seen other Kasai players do very consistently against me. A little over halfway into the game, I had a command and conquer pummel turn where my opponent actually blocked eight and then still had some cards in hand and i assumed that they had a slap happy or a take it on the chin right there to actually prevent the damage if i did play the pummel but they didn't so i don't really understand why they blocked eight i wasn't like i don't it didn't make a lot of sense like unless they were playing around blue pummel which i guess i could see but they haven't seen a blue pummel yet so i don't know that was a weird block and i'm just kind of curious why they made that decision there the turn after the command and conquer pummel was so bad for me i drew into quad reds after i had made a surge in arsenal to debilitate i had put myself in a spot thinking okay i need one blue here and then i can block nine and i can just throw the debilitate here because i had the seismic surge floating but instead because of drawing quad reds i blocked and i made another surge and lost all my tempo right there towards the end of the game i made the decision to actually take damage and go all the way down to one to throw the golden sun with overpower to try and end the game now the odds of it ending the game from there when my opponents at two are not super likely but there is a chance that we can win the game I'd really like to know what you guys think about my play because there's some arguments there to just block out and try to stay at four life and then throw the hammer. But I wasn't really sure if I was supposed to block and play for a longer game because one or two pumps when I'm at four can kill me from out of nowhere. But my decision also feels like it kind of cost me to lose an 11 to 4 life lead and I kind of threw the game away. I'd really like to know your all's thoughts on that line there. Guys, if you see anything you think I missed, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about it. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Take it easy, guys.